What's up, everybody? This is Jimmy with Trading Dakota. It is 4.01 in the afternoon. The market is closed. Uh, today, the market giveth and it taketh away. Um, if you were lucky enough or fortunate enough to play the nice, clean moves to the downside, congratulations. Today was nice and easy for you. And then we found a bottom and started to break through resistances on the way back to the upside, which you could have, again, made some money. And then we ended up in a range that was just difficult to trade. And I know that quite a few people gave up profits that they had already made because, you know, trading more always produces positive results for your trading account. Said nobody ever. Um, guys, learn to walk away when you're green, especially, especially when the market is not being kind anymore. Just some food for thought. With that said, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the charts, see what she did and uh, see how we could have played it. We had uh, we had three pre-market lines as we always do, and we had three targets high and three targets low, um, all of which got touched and uh, broken through. I didn't even draw a fourth one down because most of us were done by the time we got down to the third one. But with that said, um, call scenario was a break of or a breach above 493. Uh, where are we at 493.51, looking for a move to 493.75. Uh, that was a quick move, and it wasn't really able to be taken because we opened above that line. So the call line was nullified simply because we opened above it before the market started. However, on that opening candle, as we were pushing up, pushing up, pushing up, I am over here looking at the cues saying, man, I like this to the downside. And my saying that triggered a whole bunch of people to buy puts and it worked out, it worked out. I actually got in myself on this candle. Uh, the put line was, uh, we were looking for a move from 493.15 down to 492.91. Uh, it didn't provide that move on the break, on the original breaking candle, but a lot of us held on to that trade because the cues were being uh, rejecting pretty good up here. But more importantly, um, and this is a good one, was ADD today opened very, very, very red and got a lot more red. So ADD opened in minus 1600 territory. That's not good for the market moving up, especially when it's going lower and lower and lower on the day, guys, okay? ADD is a good barometer for what the overall market is doing. Now this is telling me that the majority of the, the, the market opened up red and then it continued to sell off. That is what kept me holding on to these puts in this move right here. Now, as we got to our put line, we said to a lot of people, guys, this is where we found resistance. It might turn into support. If you got in up here and you're here, you're in profit, take it off if you don't feel comfortable holding it. Now, I'm sorry for this red green box. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's my way of giving the members in our community a visual representation of when you have you're you're in the side of the market that's either heavy buyers or heavy sellers doesn't mean you have to buy puts when you're in the red doesn't mean you have to buy calls when you're in the green we have counter trend traders in our community we've got people that would gladly play calls while we're in the red section and gladly play puts when we're in the green section i don't draw these until later in the day so this didn't exist until actually right around 10.45 in the morning when we found support here and started to make our way back to the upside. The first thing people want to know after a move down like this is when would you buy calls? So I give them this visual representation of when I'd be interested in buying calls based on the midway point of the current high of day and the current low of day. Now I am going to move this down so you can see what this looked like at this time, but I told everybody I wouldn't be interested in calls unless we can get above into the green line and start breaking some levels of resistance after that. OK, so the point was, if you're looking for calls and we'll get back to the puts in the beginning, if you're looking for calls, wait for a candle close above this yellow line. You're in the green area. We should start moving up from there. Guys, it, 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 it did its thing. OK, this is not a trading strategy of any kind. But this is the fulcrum of the market. This is where I am trying, as somebody who's trying to protect other people from themselves, if you have less 
as, as, as somebody who's learning how to do this, the least amount of options that you have available to you to confuse you with, I feel like the better off you are, right? There are so many reasons to be hesitant in about every trade we get into. I mean, you'll, there's always going to be a reason that makes you say, should I be doing this? Is this the right thing? Whether it's an indicator, whether it's your gut, whether it's, you know, a trend, whether it's a pattern. I mean, there's all kinds of things that would tell you to or not to get into trades. But what if 50% of the trade choice you had was gone? Meaning, if we're in the red zone trending up, and by trending up, I mean higher lows, higher highs, are puts the right thing to do? No. So apply some logic, guys. If, if and when we put in our first higher low, which we call out right here at 1053, puts off the table, beware. Okay, if you're in puts because you bought this flag or whatever, this is a bad sign. If we close above that line, you're gonna to wanna to get out of this trade. That's exactly how that goes. The minute we put in higher lows and higher highs and start taking out resistances to our left, it's game on. Not that I would be interested in buying calls down here because we're still seller heavy in this zone, but the buyers are gaining traction and we know that because we reverse course, okay? In fact, puts come off the table the minute this downtrend is over, okay? You have to wait and reassess to see what happens after this. If it's higher lows and higher highs, you've got to get rid of puts. Don't buy them too soon, though. Don't buy calls too soon, though. This, obviously, after the fact, looked like a good time to start buying calls. However, just be just be patient. Hey, look, guys, we went from the put section of, of trade making decision to the call section. Are we still trending up? The answer is yes. What are we looking for in an uptrend when we're looking for calls? If we break through resistance, we're looking for it to move up to the next resistance. What changes that? If we get a higher low and a higher high, and a lower high. I'm sorry, if we get a lower high and a lower low. Until that happens, guys, we're trending up. So yes, we broke this downtrend. No, I wasn't going to buy calls in that. But I said if I was going to get into calls, I'd wait till the green area and I'll wait for a candle close above resistance. This is the first time it happened. We never came back below that point. We closed above it. You're on the buyer side of the market. Jump in. Take your profits. Stop loss was below this double bottom right here. It's tight. It's a 14 cent stop loss, guys. 14 cents. Go with the flow. Go with the flow. All right? Anyway, over here, this one was a little risky, as all opening trades are, okay? This was an on-the-fly decision, okay? We didn't take calls because we opened above the call line. We started to struggle here big time, both the Qs with these wicks on top and ADD was tanking. That's all I needed to see. I jumped into puts early, got into these things, got myself out of these puts right around this yellow line, which was our first original target. This was a great trade. That was a 26.7% win, and that was a one and done for me. So I got into the market at 9.30. I got out of the market. I might even got out over here at 9.38. Eight minute day, made 26% on my money. It was a good day. A lot of people took that same trade as me. A lot of people held onto these puts because they wanted to see it go lower. And truthfully, if you're looking at ADD, it looked like it wanted to go much, much lower, and it later did. Um, Qs. Once they rejected this line up here, it was a clean downtrend from there for quite some time. Okay, so we had folks hold and the 10 o'clock candle actually saved them, allowed them to get out of their trades the second time or the third time they had the opportunity to get out where they were supposed to. Now, we look at this and we say, oh my God, look at how much money we left on the table. You're absolutely right. Okay, fact of the matter was we... Didn't I didn't want to recommend holding through that line. I told everybody, man, you guys got a tough decision to make because these 10 o'clock candles, they can get big to the upside, they can get big to the downside. The sad part is we just don't know which way they're going to go. And neither do you. So it's a risk holding through 10 o'clock candles. It always is, always will be. We were trending up at the time, wedging to the upside. It was a miracle that it broke down. We broke the uptrend. We closed below support. 
Also a great reason to get into puts, okay? Straight down to the next line and then continued moving down, respecting every line of support and resistance that we had on the chart until the flag broke to the upside. Okay, this was a potential flag play. We were looking for a, a candle close below that trend line. Okay, you got it here. Nothing wrong with that trade. We would expect it to continue down, right? It breaks the downtrend and we put in a higher low. Could you have made money on this? Not realistically. Could you have gotten out before it hurt? Absolutely. You just had to trust the fact that higher lows are not good for puts. And if you waited for a candle close above the resistance, that was the reason for you getting in. You still got out with a minimal scrape. What you can't do is wait for this thing to get too far away from you to where it hurts so much that you just can't get yourself out of the trade because you can't stomach the loss. Nothing wrong with this flag play setup. It did not work out. We recognized it early. Some people got out break even. Some people got out with a very small profit. And some people got out with a very small loss. That's all you can do, guys. Trade the chart. Respect what it's telling you. And if it doesn't work out, get out of the trade. We break the downtrend. We start moving up. Okay, We're still in the red area. Rejecting, rejecting, rejecting. Finally get into the green. Close above that line. And up we go. Now, this was not a fun time to trade and i was on lunch break anyway from 12 i don't know 12 15 12 20 to to 120. i uh, came back to see that we really hadn't done much else since then uh we we, we break high now let me what is the high here 4 494 16 i'm gonna put put our green thing back here All right. Um, we start moving up, start moving up. Now I was being asked, Jimmy, would you buy puts at uh, 493.51? It's been a good resistance uh, on the day. Or I'm sorry, not 493.51. For, uh, yeah, 493.51, this, this pre-market midline. As you can see, it rejected there, rejected there, 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 and there. Uh, I would have been all down for that except for two reasons. Number one, uh, we were in the green zone. Number two, Q's at this point had broken its downtrend and we're on a nice trend to the upside. Okay, I don't I don't like that. I don't like playing against the Q's. And number three, at that time, ADD had flattened out and ultimately started to move back up too. Still very red, but the, the, the direction of ADD is what I'm interested in, not the numbers so much, okay? Too many reasons to not play puts up here in the green section. Now, again, this gentleman was correct in noticing that it was a strong resistance. Now, he didn't ask me until we were getting close to it around 220. I said, truthfully, this time I would not buy puts here. And the reason is, is that we are on a, a steady, not aggressive, but a steady uptrend, higher lows, higher highs. That, and for that reason, I would not buy puts when we get to this line this time. Drew the line and everything so he could see what I was talking about. You can see the higher lows. You can see the higher highs. It's not going anywhere fast, but it's going up. That's telling me that the buyers are getting stronger. I wasn't expecting a big move out. I said that. I said, I wouldn't buy them here. I'm not expecting a huge breakout, but at the same time, I wouldn't buy it. And if you do take it, I would certainly make a close above that line your stop. So for those of you who bought puts here and stopped out here, good for you. Well, Jimmy, would you buy them if we broke 493.92? Well, if you're going to do that, you know, it's 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 tough to say because I was asked that question after this candle right here had printed. Do you think it's going to, sh should we buy calls if we close above 493.92? I said, if you feel like calls are the way to go, you take calls, but you can't hesitate, right? Should we wait for a candle close above this wick? I said, uh... I don't like to buy the high a day. I don't trade this late in the day. And if you wait for a candle close above that wick, how far away are you from the next resistance line? It's probably going to be less than 20 cents. Not for me. So I don't know if that gentleman ever took that trade or not. I hope he didn't because uh, it didn't really work out. And uh, once you get this late in the day, any pullbacks, guys, if you got into a call here and you waited for a candle like this here, you lost your behind. And if you got stuck, I mean, theta is horrible this late in the day. It just is horrible. 
All right. I hate trading late in the day. I know some folks enjoy it because the contracts are really cheap. And if you happen to be lucky enough to get on the right side of some of those cheap, cheap contracts, they can gain value really, really fast. My goal is not to trade all day long. If you're leaving your nine to five job, your eight hour a day job, just to move into another eight hour a day job, why? You know, the difference between your eight hour a day job that you work for somebody else is you get the same amount of money regardless. If you spend eight hours trying to trade, you're most likely going to give up any money that you made. This is a two way road when you trade, guys. More trades does not equal more money. Not a single person has ever proven to me otherwise. Not one. And if you are that person, you should be very, very proud of yourself because I, in three years, have not found a single person that says, yes, Jimmy, the more I trade per day, the more trades I take per day, the more my account benefits. In fact, it's, it's the exact opposite. It's the exact opposite. Guys, you have to understand that spending more time in a hazardous environment, which is the market, is, is net negative for positivity, usually. Okay, You're opening yourself up to additional risk every time you step into the market. If I could tell you, hey, as your boss, let's say I was your boss at your day job. Hey, Johnny, I know that you make $200 a day and uh, I know you don't have to work all day to get your job done. So I'll just make it like this. As soon as you get your work done for the day, you're going to still make that 200 bucks, but you can go home and enjoy the rest of the day. Now, I don't know anybody who would say no to that. Because what if you're fast enough and good enough to do your job in 30 minutes instead of eight hours? What if you can do what needs to be done in 30 minutes or 60 minutes or 90 minutes? You still get your $200 for working for the day, but you get to go home and enjoy your day. Why don't you look at trading that way? If you can get in, make money quick, 30, 60, 90 minutes, why would you stay at that job in, in, in for no additional benefit? Meaning, you're not going to make more than the 200 bucks that you did at your job, so why would you stay longer? Right? But Jimmy, if I stay and trade more, I'll make more. No, you won't. No, you won't. If you end up on the right side of a trade or two in the morning, walk away. Do yourself a favor. Walk away. None of you, none of you, or most of you, I don't want to say nobody, but most of you, have not been able to trade all day long and end up getting more green the more often you do it. Okay? So with that, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Hope you had a fantastic day today. I also hope you found some valuable information in this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I'd appreciate you. If you'd like to join our Discord community, well, there's a link down below. We'd love to have you. First week is completely free. You don't have to sign up for anything. Just show up. Show up and spend some time with us. See if it's something that suits you. My goal and the goal of this entire community is to teach you something you didn't know that will help you become a better trader along your journey with us or not. It doesn't matter to me. What matters to me for the same reason I make these videos is that you learn something that helps you. That's all I care about. I want you to be better. I want you to get better. I want you to feel good about your trades that you're taking so that you can feel comfortable trading with or without a community. All right. Also, check out our website at www.trading-dakota.com. And uh, yeah, we're going to wrap it up. Hope you all had a fantastic day. Till tomorrow, I love you guys. See ya!